This is Investment Perspectives with Brad Kimes. Daily live streaming interactive featuring Mrs. Backup. Subscribe, hit the notification, smash the likes. Now, here's Backup Brad Kimes. Come on in. Welcome back to Investment Perspectives, everybody. I want to just take a quick second and put together a few things that I'm seeing that uh, I think are going to lead us to quite a conversation here. And I'm interested to get your feedback in the comments below this video. So we know we had the Digital Dollar Project release their white paper. If you haven't seen those videos from yesterday, please go watch them. It's, it's pretty incredible. I'm not going to run through it again today, but there's a lot of information there that deals with government bonds. It deals with whether you are responsible and can redeem your digital dollar if you don't have it in a federally insured account. Short story, you can't, so you better keep it somewhere it's insured. They even talk about that whole angle of keeping the commercial banks relevant by having the insurance to the account to really kind of incentivize you to keep your money in the banking system. Pretty remarkable stuff there and many, many other things. So definitely check out those videos. But I wanted to start by showing you the Digital Dollar Project and then move through to some material that I've found that I think is worth the conversation here. You know, the timing is just impeccable. So then there's Parallel, which is going to be uh, a, another a, a entity attached to the Chamber of Digital Commerce, which is Chris and Charles Giancarlo. Uh, we have to keep an eye on what goes on with them. Now here, I wanted to talk about this because this is a clip, and shout out to Trade Snake for posting this is where I saw it. Uh, let's look at this clip. It's, a, it's about a minute or more, and let's l look at the names here we're looking at. BlackRock, Vanguard, State Street, Deutsche Bank. Uh, let just listen to the clip. Welcome back. We have some breaking news on the Fed. Let's get to Steve Leisman. What's going on, Steve? Yeah, some new data that you should get used to here, Kelly. The Fed announcing uh, the um, uh, trades that it's made in the ETF space. Remember, it was just uh, this past month or in this month that the Federal Reserve, for the first time, began buying exchange-traded funds. For the first time, for the first time, that's how bad the market is. I mean, it's first of all, that's a hell of a notion when you talk about the Fed doing something for the first time in a grandiose fashion, as they're talking about here. And I'm going to play this again. I just wheeled it back a little bit. But I just want everybody to be very clear. For the first time, the Fed has had to step in and buy ETFs. Keep listening. In this month at the Federal Reserve, for the first time, began buying exchange-traded funds in order to purchase corporate bonds. The top sponsors uh, were BlackRock at $755 million. This is for purchases made from May 12th through the 18th. Uh, Vanguard, $549 million. State Street, two fifty two down at Deutsche Bank at thirteen six. Now, people are probably interested in the... These are incredible companies. As you know, BlackRock was put in charge of $27 trillion for the Federal Reserve to do a lot of these buybacks and purchases. This is exactly what we're seeing them do with the money here and propping up the market the entire time it's happening. I don't think this is over because this does not a healthy market make. Funds that they bought, the LQD was the number one fund, according to my research, at 395 VCIT. That's a Vanguard fund. These are all uh, corporate bond funds of some sort, uh, usually intermediate bond funds. 278, uh, DCSH 271, and HYG 116. Kelly, I don't know about a strategy of getting out in front of these. This is uh, data is a little bit old. They're continuing to buy it. Uh, but maybe some of your uh, market experts can tell us whether or not you want to play this Fed trade of where the Fed is buying these particular corporate bonds. Yeah, I will uh, speak to one of them in just a few minutes, Steve. Thanks. It's still so strange to see those lists of sure. ETFs. Uh, that's our Steve Lee right. with sure. the latest on the And they understand clearly just how odd it is. And you talk about odd. Listen to this clip from the president talking about, and this was came out, uh, a few days ago, uh, okay, published uh, May 8th, so it was in the beginning of May, I guess. But listen to this clip right here. I'm going to wheel it in. It's the minute clip. It's like a minute before it says what I want you to say, but it needs to set everything up. So let's just hear this. 15 years to recover, more than that. Uh, so we, we do it, I, we're doing it the right way. We have a lot of 
great students of finance. I'm one of them. And uh, we're throwing money at it. And I'll tell you what, I've watched some people that — and read some people that I would say would not have agreed with that. And I haven't seen anybody disagreeing with what we're doing. And, in fact, they say what we're doing with the PPP, with, you know, all of the things that we're doing is — is great. One thing we could do is a payroll tax cut. Okay, listen. That seems to bother the Democrats. The one thing with a payroll tax cut, though, it's over a little bit longer period of time. But a payroll tax cut is something that some people that are very smart. Get ready. I'm one of those people that like it because I think it's really sustainable. I think it's uh, it will sustain it. But that's one thing that uh, a lot of people would like to see. Mr. President, you were with seven. Another thing they'd like to see is a capital gains tax cut, meaning no capital gains. Some Republicans. Whoa. A stoppage of capital gains. Republicans are it's true, true, hardline Republicans around the table. Not all of them. Some people might say, Louis might say, forget it. But uh, some people would say that a capital gains stoppage, uh, cutting capital gains, getting rid of capital gains tax, they've said that for many years would be a great thing. Are you hearing this? Is this on? You're talking about a situation, a current event situation of a deliberate shutdown of our economy and globally speaking. And you're talking about the idea and notion of stopping capital gains while we're watching the Fed buy ETFs, corporate bonds, for the first time. What, because things are so good? Oh, I don't think so. Now, although this is a cartoon illustration, take a look at this. This is from Jeff Rourke, PPT, or, yeah, PPT, thank you for this little cartoon. I also had it sent to me by a friend of mine. Uh, shout out to him. If you look at this, it's showing the stock market and the bulls taking a bow, encore, encore, bravo, and the bear off to the side with the cane, and then the the producer telling him, not yet, not yet. And he's going, now, now? Because I believe this is an excellent illustration of where we're headed here. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be a negative Nancy, so to speak, but the truth is, is that, you know, this propping up of the market it's manufactured, right? I mean, it's not its not happening because of a bustling economy, right? We all know that we're in a deliberate shutdown, and they're just now attempting to begin to open things back up to a degree. And now there's talk about a second wave or potential mutation of the pandemic that we've uh, dealt with here. So we don't know what will happen come winter. But I tell you, the notion of the president talking about a capital gain stoppage, which means you could take your investment out of its account and you could cash out without any capital gains. What in the world do you think that would do to the stock market? If you told everybody right now you could take your retirement fund, your pension, or or well, put maybe not your pension if it's not if it's not under, under falling under it, but probably you can with the capital gains. The reality is is that if you could access that money and know that you're not going to be hit with twenty seven or thirty plus percent tax, what do you think people that are struggling right now would choose to do? Because I think I know what they would do. They'd take the money out. For that matter, I know people that would say, well, I'd love the opportunity to take my gains of my investment and take all of that out of the market, be able to not be taxed on capital gains of that investment, and then either make purchases somewhere else, real estate or some other area, or buy back in in a different place in the market. It's just remarkable to me. I, look, we don't know that this will happen, but he's floating it. 
And if he's floating it, it's obviously a conversation. He says he's got seven Republicans there that he knows already would go for it. So you just have to keep an eye on these things. You don't know that they're 100 percent. But I'll tell you this, with the onset of the announcement of the Digital Dollar Project white paper, knowing who heads that project up and who's involved in that project. Like I said, if you haven't seen those videos, go watch them. The backdrop of what is going on in traditional markets correlated with the digital asset space and the introduction of a digital dollar. It absolutely feels like it is in tandem. It is certainly the markets correlate with one another. This digital dollar is right on time. And I know they're going to have trials and a process from the white paper and so on. But it seems to me that everything is falling into place. And I don't believe that the U.S. has been as behind the eight ball as everyone would suspect. All right, that's going to do it for me, guys. If you have any comments or thoughts, please leave them in the comment section below, and we will continue this on the next one. Take care.